Lord's offering, and then I've got a word from the Lord for you. So some things are teaching for instruction purposes. Some things are teaching through knowledge. Others are through revelation. So thank you for joining this morning. Anyone that watches this through Facebook, YouTube, whatever platform this reaches you at, I'm looking at Acts chapter 2 this morning. Acts chapter 2. Now I want you to look with me in verse 42. This is a foundational scripture that's going to be mean very much for us in the days to come. Not only the days to come, but today. Today. It says, and they continued steadfastly. Say that with me. Steadfastly. Steadfastly. In the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Can you advance this for me, April? If you can see my... Just stop right there. If you can see what I've got up here, I've, I've done this for your benefit. Please take notes on this. I'm going to be talking to you about the four pillars of apostolic culture. What do I mean by that? The early church was not a building and facilities, but it held a culture. It was not a building and facilities, but it held a culture. There was a culture that the apostles held. And not only did they hold that culture, but they imparted it to the early believers. So I'm going to talk to you about the pillars of that apostolic culture. Can you move forward here? Just stay with me. So what's the first thing that we see from Acts 2.42? Keep going. The first thing we see from Acts 2.42 is that there was a steadfast devotion. A steadfast devotion. If you've heard me teach on this about 10 to 12 years ago, this is all coming back around. You know, 10 to 12 years ago, this, this verse of Scripture, I think I spent about a year teaching this verse of Scripture on Sunday nights, and I believe I talked about it on Sunday mornings uh, in the Fire Christian Fellowship at that time. And I saw something here. And I wasn't sure to what all I saw. But I knew that I saw something. I knew there were some ingredients here. And I was trying to put it together and bake a cake, but there were some things that I didn't have and understand about it at that time that I have now. Number one was my understanding of spiritual fathering and being a spiritual son. Number two was the understanding of a family and the family of God. And number three, there was the household of faith and understanding that we are a household of faith. So what are these things? The culture. The church had a culture. Let's move forward. Let's say these with me. These are the four things. The apostles' doctrine, fellowship, so they would be breaking of bread, breaking of bread, and prayers. Bread. Let's go back over that. Apostles' doctrine, Apostle doctrine, fellowship, fellowship, breaking of bread, breaking of bread, and prayers, and prayers. Now we can see if you begin reading and studying the Book of Acts, this is what the church in the Book of Acts operated from. Yes, they operated in the power of the Holy Spirit. But when you look at everything that was happening, Luke, who wrote this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, tells us that these were the four pillars to their entire culture of the church. This is what the, those in the church were steadfastly giving themselves over to. This was their devotion. This is what they were devoted to. What were they devoted to? The Apostles' Doctrine. Say it with me. Apostles' Doctrine. Fellowship. 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 Breaking of bread. Breaking of bread. And prayers. And prayers. There's a lot I could say about this in comparison to today's church, but I won't go there now. Can you bring the next thing up? These things brought this, this thing into their lives. It was the establishment of the believers. You probably can't see that real well. The establishment of the believers. You didn't have in and out shaky believers. They walked in power. From the least to the greatest. From the least to the greatest. 
So much so that they had all things in common. They had all things in common. That's what verse 44 tells us. It says that fear, on verse 43, fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. This led to such a culture as a culture of a family. An apostolic culture is the culture of a family. It says that those who had real estate that they didn't need, I'm going to break it down into the modern vernacular, they went and sold that land and took the proceeds from it, laid it at the apostles' feet for anyone within that family, if they had need, the need was met. In other words, they, they knew how to profit from real estate. Hmm. Whatever they had invested in it came back to them, but whatever the profit was, they came and laid the profit at the apostles' feet. I'm talking to you about a whole different culture. You've been, you may have been church culture, and if, if you've received over the course of your lifetime the culture of the church, then it's going to be vastly different than an apostolic culture. Let's go forward here one more time. The Apostles' Doctrine, Apostles doctrine. Fellowship, 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 Breaking of Bread, breaking of bread, bread. and prayers. prayers. Let's go to the next page. All of that comes into what I'm calling, and I'm not the only one, this is an apostolic reformation. This type of Christianity is going to be completely new and different to you, but you're going to have to receive it. You will either stay where you have been, or either you will move forward into this. There is no option. There, you, you either have to cut bait and run, or either you have to, to move forward with it. You'll either stay in the old season, you'll stay in the Pentecostal charismatic season, and if you do, you'll die in that season. Or either you will move into the new season of God. And the new season of God is that he is, he is bringing a new word, a now word, into this season, and you have to receive that season. You have to receive the now word. And the now word is that there's an entire apostolic reformation that's happening. It's happening on the whole planet. Right. Unfortunately, we as our civilized American minds have it, we are on the tail end of this. This is foreign to us because it's been on foreign shores. This is the mind and thinking in South Africa. This is the mind and thinking in Asia. This is how they think. A culture is how you think. You, you've been cultured to think churchianity, but you have not been cultured to think kingdom. The apostolic culture is a kingdom culture. It is a kingdom mindset. This won't happen overnight. You're going to have to hear these things over and over and over. You're going to have to be connected to it, and you're going to have, because it has to get in you. It has to get in you. So what is this thing that Apostles Doctrine? I'm going to focus on this one first, and we'll cover the next over the next course of weeks. The Apostles Doctrine. Let's move forward. First of all, let's get some understanding of what who the Apostles were. The Apostles were fathers. They were fathers to the church. And still are. Those whom God has called in the earth to be apostles. We know from 1 Corinthians 12, 28, he said that God said in the church first, apostles. What are they? Apostles are fathers. They're fathers. They're fathers in the faith. Apostles father a culture of spiritual maturity. That's what they will do. So we have to understand what he's saying, the apostles' doctrine. We have to understand what an apostle is. An apostle, Paul said that he was a father. He said, you've had 10,000 teachers, but you haven't had many fathers. And for this cause, I have begotten you in the gospel and have become a father to you. He didn't say he was a pastor. We've had a pastoral model. We have had a, post, uh, a pastoral pattern in the earth. But we have not had the fathering model 
in the church. This apostolic reformation is going to be a reformation of church culture. What do I mean by that? How church has been done, how church has been viewed, how everything that you've experienced is, is changing, is going to change. How are you going to experience God in this new season? You're going to experience him in the family. Let me say that again. You're going to experience him in the family. Whereas you may have gone to church before looking for Holy Ghost goosebumps, that's not going to be the mark of that, this season. The mark of a man in this season, the mark of a woman of God in this season, is not going to be how gifted she is, how talented she is, how eloquent he is, how well he can break down the Word of God, but what will be celebrated in his life will be character. His character will be that which is celebrated. Why? We have watched over many years now. We have watched those who have risen up in ministry, who were gifted, talented, but did not have the character to carry it. <laughs> and we have watched over and over and over the fall of ministries over and over and over. Why? Because it was not built in them the character. The necessary character. This is what will be celebrated in this season. Let's move forward. How does this apostolic doctrine come forward? What is it that the early church possessed? Obviously they possessed a level of maturity that we don't know today. Only the mature can reproduce themselves. It says that God added to the church daily such as should be saved. If God added to us now, if God added to the church daily those that should be saved, what would we do with them? What would we do with them? If God gives you children, then it is your job to raise them. But what we've had is children raising children. We've had babysitters raising the people of God. A babysitter is a, a paid person who comes in to clean up the mess and entertain them until the parent comes home, right? Right. That's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 4, 15. You've had many teachers. If you look it up in Greek, the word there, teachers, means a, a, boy, a boy babysitter. You just had somebody to babysit you. That's why Paul says, I'm not going to babysit you. I'm going to be your daddy. I'm going to be a daddy to you. And a daddy is not going to talk to you like a babysitter does. That's right. A, ba a babysitter will entertain you until daddy gets home. We've been entertained. We have a culture of entertainment in, this, in, in today's church. It's just a culture of entertainment. It has not grown the people of God to where they need to be. So what's a father going to do? Well, the apostles' doctrine was the word that was spoken by the apostles. Let's keep going. What'd you do, Abel? Right, right. Uh, he will get. <laughs> you escape and go out. There you go. You're, you're clicking too many times there. Now it's showing you the bottom. Now you can go. There you go. Beautiful, you did great, April. What was going on in the early church? Well, one of the things that we can see is that for 300 years, right, they were up against the Roman Empire. The whole culture of the Roman Empire. 
that that mentality of the Romans, you know, as they, we still say, when you're in Rome, do as the Romans. The Roman Empire was an empire that was worldwide of the known world at that time. How is it that this church that we read about in Acts changed the entire world and they did not even have what we call the New Testament? How? It was, it just, was it a miracle of God? No. It wasn't a miracle. The apostles understood that they were going to have to father a new mentality and a new mindset and a new culture into the people. That's no small task. They were going to have to take a responsibility as a father to take on people as sons in order to reproduce themselves in that person. That's what Jesus did with, with those 12. He reproduced himself into 12. And those 12, they went and reproduced those th th themselves in someone else. Are you following me? They reproduced the culture. It's no different than my, my children. My children understand the culture of my home. Right? When my children walk in, they understand I take my shoes off at the door. I don't have to tell them that every time. Why? Because they understand it. Now, if I see one trot through the house, they'll hear me say, what you doing with your shoes? Oh, sorry. I was just coming to get this. They already know. Wrong, bad idea. That's not the culture of the home. They understand the culture of the home. You don't watch this. You don't look at this. You don't. They know the culture of the home. You understand what I'm saying? They understand the culture. Father and mother lay out the culture of a home. The children then adapt to that culture. This is how the world changed. It went from house to house. Because once the children of that house, they understood. I've watched my children. When they get to other people's house, they start taking their shoes off at the door. And those people don't require you to take their shoes off. Why? Because that's the way they think. I don't enter into somebody's house with my shoes on because I don't do that at home. Do you understand what I'm saying? You begin to carry that mentality. And they went from house to house doing what? Breaking bread with people. Why were they breaking bread with people? Because they were breaking bread with one another. It becomes, the, it becomes your culture. It becomes your mentality. It becomes your mindset. It becomes the way you think. That thinking will affect people because it's vastly different than the way the world thinks. That's right. This is vastly different. People will begin to look on this and say, something's different there. Something is vastly different there. Why? Because the world is desperately searching for a family. The world is desperately searching for a family. If there was ever a time in American culture that the family is in the biggest mess it's ever been in, it is now. It is now. And the reason for that mess is because we don't have fathers. I said it's because we don't have fathers. And the church is in the same mess. And the reason the church is in that mess is because it doesn't have fathers. Amen. You can't vote a daddy out. My children can't vote me out. If I'm the father in this house, I can't be voted out. I become the father. What we have is a system of hirelings. And if daddy don't, you know, if the, the man of God doesn't say what somebody won't said, then the children get together and vote him out. Let's get in another pastor who will tell us what we want. So you're going to have to understand, that system is dying. It's on its way to the grave. The funeral is already happening. God is not in that day. God is in a day when fathering is being restored. He said, if, if fathers don't turn their hearts to children and children to the fathers, I'm going to smite the earth with a curse. The curse is already here. But how will the curse be reversed? We're going to have to go back to the pattern. We're going to have to go back to the model. We're going to have to go back to what was established in the beginning. I do believe this. God said... In this word, in the book of Acts, 
that the former house, it will not be greater than the latter house. This former house that was built, it will not be greater than the latter house. The latter house will be greater than the former. That's right. The latter house will be greater than the former. Yes. God is going to have what He said. Amen. God's right. going to have His way. Yes. With or without you. Amen. You can stay in Egypt. You can stay in the wilderness. <laughs> That's right. But if you're going to listen to God, you're going to have to move with Joshua. Yeah, right. Because the day of Moses is over. Joshua, Moses is dead. He's been dead for a long time. It's time for you to go over. Do you see the, the change happens? The cloud was going to move over. The cloud was going over. You, you've got to decide you're going to move with God or you're going to stay back there. Staying there is comfortable. Why? Because it's all you've ever known. Right. When someone starts talking to you about moving somewhere new, there can be anticipation and excitement until the instructions and the corrections have to begin coming. This is what's missing from the house of God in this day. This is what's missing from the church today. We don't have the voice of correction. We don't have the voice of instruction. Therefore, we don't know where to go or what to do. We just still look for more of the same. Right. Well, you can't eat yesterday's manna. Can you advance this for me? Because God said, if you don't eat today's manna, if you try to eat it tomorrow, it will have worms. Right. It will stink. Right. You have to eat what God is saying today. The apostles were speaking the preceding word of God. What was coming from God's mouth in that moment, in that day. How, how, can, I, how can I tell you this? Well, in, even in the book of uh, Acts, I believe it's chapter 13. We can see that the apostles and teachers, the prophets and teachers were gathered at Antioch. There was a great church there. And the Holy Spirit said, separate unto me Paul and Barnabas. That was the now word. So, you know, you, you, can't, you can't, as a son and daughter, you can't sit there and say, well, let's pray about that. No, the word came forward, separate me Paul and Barnabas. There's no question. How is there no question? Because there is a system of set authority. You have set people over you in the Lord. When that person has spoken, y'all start thinking, oh, I don't know about this. This is how God's moving. When Moses said it's time to move, they moved. When Joshua said it's time to move, they moved. You didn't question authority. They didn't question the set person of the hour. People were not questioning the apostles. Someone could have come along and said, well, yeah, who's Paul? Who's Paul? He, went, he didn't walk with Jesus. He was recognized not only by the Holy Spirit, but by the other apostles. That's right. As an apostle to the Gentiles. He said, I didn't go and confer with anyone except Peter. And all of these apostles had structure and order. I can see that from the scripture. The chief apostle among the apostles was James. You may say, well, you know, I don't read much about James. You don't have to. Because when they had a meeting and gathering of the apostles, when James spoke, that was the end of it. Right. And I can tell you this, too, that when Herod went after the apostles, he went after the head first, and James was the first one to die. And he, when he said that he saw that it pleased the pe people, then he was set to kill Peter, too, because Peter would be the next in line. And then John, Peter, James, and John. There's a lot to be said about James. James didn't say much. You don't have to say much when you walk in authority. When you walk in authority among those who have authority. You can only have authority if you are under authority. That's right. You can't walk in authority unless you are under authority. The problem that we have today, we have people trying to speak things and say things, but they don't have any authority because they're not under authority. It takes faith to be under authority. Jesus said, I've never seen such great faith when he spoke about the Roman centurion. The Roman centurion said, I understand. Speaking something and it happens. Why? Because I'm a man under authority. And when I say to this person that's under my authority, this happens and that happens. Jesus said, there's not so great a faith in all of Israel. What's happening here? Let's go forward. They're speaking the now relevant rhema word, the manna word, the anointed word, the new word, the now word. Those are things that we'll cover in the future. 
Very soon. Very soon. Very soon. So I've got a now word for you today. I have a now word for you today. Chauncey, I want you to go ahead and end this session right here. We're going to 